George Bruno with the 21 Report, the European edition. We are in Warsaw, Poland, and I'm having a conversation with Nick Kranzer. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So what did you talk about today on stage? It was about the London day game model. So that is the way of picking up girls in the street, in the mall, uh, cafes during the daytime. So it was a technical presentation, like how to do it. Yeah. Um, at each stage along. Yeah. Is that important for a man, do you think? Uh, does that, when you give him steps, does he, uh, does, do many men need to be, have their hands held in that direction? I mean, does it give them confidence to kind of uh, take that first step? Well, I think um, an, an analogy I like to use would be, say, fighting. Um, you're going to make a very reasonable case that just like seducing women, fighting is innate, it's natural, it's what men are meant to do. Yes. And yet we have boxing, we have Muay Thai, we have Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, we have wrestling. There are oh. ways of doing it. And even if a man has a natural aptitude for it, he can be better by learning correct technique, training his attributes, getting experience so that when the key moment of performance comes, he's better able to handle mm -hmm. the challenge, mm -hmm. even though the whole behavior is in some way innate and natural and everyone has some aptitude. Yeah. So and yeah, I think the, the model, it helps because all that hard work's been done. Yeah. It's the equivalent of going into a boxing class and being taught the correct way to jab and when to jab and right. how to slip and how to counter. And you have to improvise that because well. things aren't always going to go the way that the instructor says. Oh, absolutely. And it's not even that everyone will have the same style. So yeah. again, if I can push the boxing metaphor a bit more, is Floyd Mayweather Jr. fights different to Manny Pacquiao, fights different to Mike Tyson, fights yes. differently. But they all use the same combination of techniques. Yes. They all do technically correct boxing. Yeah. But it's like night and day to watch their personal creativity put onto it and then how they react in the moment depending on what their opponent's doing. Right. And pickups the same, I think. So do you do seminars or personal one-to-one -one coaching? Um, mostly I'm writing now, mm -hmm. writing books about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I do occasional one-to-one, -one, what we call residential coaching, where it's a one-week program, one-on-one, -on -one, to try to go in field and get the guys digging yeah. a lot better. Oh, excellent, excellent. How is this different than than what a guy might experience or learn just growing up without it? Um, well, a lot of game, like the skill set's called game, um, a lot of it's counterintuitive. Um, especially when much of modern society is teaching you the opposite. Mm -hmm. That just compounds the problem. So, attraction, so pickup, usually, usually we say it's got three different elements, three different phases attraction, comfort, seduction. Mm. Now, most men know how to do comfort, normal getting to know each other, normally building rapport. That is relatively in key with what people expect. But attraction and seduction tend to be counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. So for example, attraction, usually it comes from breaking rapport, and that feels like taking a big risk. Mm -hmm. So if a guy is talking to a pretty girl, usually he's gonna be risk averse. He doesn't wanna piss her off. He doesn't wanna make the situation difficult. Yes. But the problem with that is he's not gonna build sexual tension. Mm -hmm. So two key elements of attraction are teasing and challenging. And men usually have to learn that. When they're little kids and they're just throwing stones at the girls they like, it comes naturally. Mm -hmm. But it gets bred out of them so that normally by the time they're 20, they don't really know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So they have to learn. What age of man or age range is best appropriate to learn day game? Um, I think there's a Chinese proverb, when's the best time to plant a tree? Best time was 10 years ago, second yeah. best time's today. Yeah. So same thing in game. I mean best thing you could possibly have is your father is naturally charismatic and knows game and brings you up or yes. you go through school in a peer group which reinforces that but a lot of men don't have that socialization yes. experience so they've got to crack out the textbooks go to the program and right. doing the hard work which is what I had to do right and uh, so then yeah I mean the later you start the more set in your ways you are yeah. the harder it is to change less brain plasticity but the later you start, the more confident you are of your place in the world as a man, the more gravitas you have. Mm -hmm. So you do have a countervailing force which can help. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the earlier the better. 
Are there any, um, so, all right, so learning game, does that spill over into other areas of life? I mean, well, let's say if a guy is a salesman and he learns from you, reads your book, is that knowledge going to spill over into his professional life? It seems like game is life. Well, yes, although ironically, much of the early pickup artist material came from salesmen. Is that right? So a lot of the concepts came from, I think it was um, Hoover vacuum salesmen in New York in the 20s. Okay. Who were doing door-to-door -door salesmen. Yes. Because door-to-door is kind of cold approach. It sure like door is. knocking. And they developed their model, for example, the IDA model, what's it, attention, interest, decision, action. Yeah. That is very, very similar to the pickup model. Yeah. Um, so the overlap is tremendous yeah. because you can make a case that game is just selling where the product is you. Right. So incredible. Now what you've got is a feedback loop where salesmen can learn from particularly the charisma side of what pickup teaches you. Yes. But I think if you really had to break it, break it apart, I'd say sales came first, pickup came second okay. in that link. Excellent. Excellent. So any man, could you work with a guy who's 60 years old? Right, yes, because the way to think of pickup is it's not do this and you're gonna you know, sleep with supermodels, right? That's ridiculous marketing, not gonna happen. What it is, is it's all SMV, sexual market value adjusted. Yes. So let's say the guy's level's here. Game will add. But he's not going to get the, you know, a guy who was born six foot four, who's got himself ripped, who's naturally outgoing, who's yeah. got a good facial, symmetrical facial features. Yeah. He's not going to reach that guy's level yeah. any more than Manny Pacquiao, because he's a small guy, is yeah. going to knock out Mike Tyson. Right. Doesn't matter how good Manny Pacquiao is, he's just too small. And it's the same with SMV. Is but for most men, if they learn game, if they're ambitious and they really go for it and they get good at it, they're going to move their level of the level of girl they sleep with up probably two points on the one to 10 scale, mm -hmm. which for the average man, that's winning the lottery. Mm. What are the points of game 101? What is, if you were talking to someone about just the, the basics, intro to game? Okay, well, game is personal charismatic value. It is conveying your value um, efficiently, mm -hmm. humorously, mm -hmm. interestingly. And so that you make an impression on the girl, because it's all about what impression are you making on the girl's mind, mm -hmm. like to fancy you, to like you. And historically, we've always thought game is three elements, attraction, comfort, seduction. So attraction, make the girl like you, make her fancy you sexually as a man. Comfort is make her comfortable with you, build rapport, establish a connection, get to know each other, calm her energy down. And then seduction is move it towards sex, escalate through physical isolation, mm -hmm. dark rooms, maybe alcohol, escalating touch, sexy talk, and then you know, the process of getting around your bed. So those yes. are normally the three stages or three elements of seduction and uh, of pickup. In every model of pickup, there's multiple models, in some way incorporates those. So, um, I mean, to say what are the elements of game? You know, I consider it, um, it's value, it's value added. It's, yeah. uh, it's what does nature intend for you? It's getting more than that through personal charismatic yes. value, which is a learned skill. Yes, interesting. All right, so let's say a guy becomes successful at it. The end goal of game is what? Okay, I have to make a distinction here. Game is a toolbox, a skill set, whereas pickup artistry, being a player, is a lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. So normally the two things go hand in hand, especially mm -hmm. amongst the younger men. Mm -hmm. You know, they learn game because they want to sleep with a lot of women. Mm -hmm. But there's other men who have different goals, right? They want a wife, they want a long-term girlfriend, they want to say they're very busy with their own projects and they want the ability to, when they want to go get a woman, to go get a woman. So the two things are different. Yes. So you can conceive of men who are very good at game, but mm -hmm. don't often use it. Donald yes. Trump would be a fantastic example of that. Yes. Because he's married. Yes. He's got other things to do. Right. And you can also get the, the case of a pickup artist who wants to be a player, but he has no game. He's just inept. Right. So, so you know, the, these things can be broken out separate. So end goal is where you've got to figure out 
every man's got to figure out for himself what he wants from life. Mm -hmm. Game is the toolkit in which to improve your interactions with women and make it considerably more likely that you're going to sleep with hot ones. Okay. After a man has a, a long-term relationship with no plans of going anywhere or he's married, is game still important? Yeah, you can game your wife. I mean, because um, game, the word is misleading because it brings in and it invites nuances like manipulation, yeah. performance, yeah. that you've got to keep up some kind of act. Yes. But the purpose of learning game, and I call it the player's journey of becoming a player and learning, just like the hero's journey from Joseph Campbell, is you're making deep level identity change. You're changing the very nature of how you interact with people and creating a new normal, a new second nature. Mm -hmm. So if you do these behaviors long enough, as a performance, as a skill set, learning with women. That just becomes the way you normally treat women. And a big part of game is learning to understand women, to calibrate from their reactions, what they think, what they want, to understand them, to build up healthy mindsets such as abundance and not over-reliance on women and boundaries so you don't tolerate their bullshit. All of these things can go straight into a patriarch within his family. And even with his daughters, handling his daughters. Mm -hmm. So game is a life skill. So it's somewhat can be misleading that most people who talk about game, most of the technology of game came from young players running around trying to have sex with lots of women. Mm -hmm. It's got considerably wider implications yeah. than that because it's about managing male-female interactions. What are the consequences of not knowing game? Okay, um, underperformance. But, but simply it is under hitting your coverage. It is sleeping with less women than you could, with less attractive women than you could, fall into a scarcity mindset where you hang on to a toxic relationship that you should be out of, allowing bad behavior yep. in a relationship because you don't feel like you have the ability to get new women. Because the abundance mentality is not how many women do I have? Oh, do I have like five different women I'm dating? Abundance is the confidence of knowing you can go out and get more. Mm -hmm. So you can have abundance even if you've got zero women because you're currently working on a project and staying yeah. away from them. You know you can go out and get more. That's abundance. And that washes over all interactions just like a guy who knows how to fight. Mm -hmm. It affects everything. Mm -hmm. He doesn't let a guy bully him in the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get bullied in the boardroom, right? Mm -hmm. He knows how to fight. doesn't mean he's going to come to blows, but it gives a certain internal steel and internal confidence from knowing you can do it. Right. And game kind of gives you that intersexually. Mm. Also, and one other thing is also it gets you very sharp at spotting when other men are fucking with you because it gives you an enhanced social acuity. So you get to know through all the theoretical side of the male dominance hierarchy, you get to know how different types of men act in different ways to jostle for position. Yes. Because you've, because doing a lot of game as a player, is taking you through a very deep multi-year social immersion project in which you get greater social acuity and that washes over everything. So if you don't do it, you're not going to develop your social acuity case um, skills as much as you could. So game also applies to interacting with men who might be vying for the same woman. Yes, it's competitive. Is you know, women have options. And um, it's, comp it's competition, there's rivalry, there's a hierarchy of men, there's all different strategies men do. Um, so pickup has a whole range. For example, there's one concept using pickup called AMOGing. It's an acronym, A-M-O-G, Alpha Male of Group. And what it means is when men are able to position themselves above you, because general rule is lead the men, the women will follow. Yes. So if you can present yourself as the leader, even if it's in a very small fractal situation, like in a bar, then the women are naturally going to be more attracted to the leader man than the other men. Yes. So if some guy's coming in and doing things which push you down and push, pull him up at your expense, that's going to affect your chances with the women in the room. So you have to learn how to deal with the men. Now, I deal in day game, which tends to be solo. You tend to meet girls one-on-one -on -one when nobody else is around. You know, they're shopping, it's in a mall or in a mm -hmm. cafe. So you don't have to deal with early interaction amogging like you would in a bar or a nightclub mm -hmm. where you might be chatting to a girl, then some guy comes over, puts his arm around you, starts fucking with you and steals the girl from you. Yeah. That's not such a threat in day game. Yeah. But, you know, there's always, girls always have options. So yeah. you've got to be ready for this stuff. Who has more options? 
males or females? I think there's an apex fallacy there. Is, um, I mean, which I used to suffer from, is I used to look at hot girls and I think, God, they have it easy. You know, everyone wants to fuck them. They just have to go to a nightclub, wave their arms about on the dance floor. They get all these offers. But it wasn't until I started dating lots of hot young women that I realized a couple of things. Number one, it only lasts so long. You know, by the time a girl's 23, she's already nervous about the 18 year olds coming through behind her mm. who are going to steal her limelight. Mm. By the time she's 30, she's really struggling. And if she's 40, there's a really serious risk that no one gives a shit about her except her family. And if she hasn't got a family, that's a problem. So girls can get it hard. So if you only focus on hot girls, which are themselves only a minority of the female population, mm -hmm. if you only focus on hot girls at their best, in their prime, in an environment like a nightclub, which is designed for them, mm -hmm. you can get the false impression that girls have it really easy, have tons of options. Okay. And then there's also the mix between sexual market value and marriage market value. Is it's, I could look at a girl on a dance floor and say, oh yeah, she could fuck any guy here. God, isn't this so easy? I have to work for it. But she doesn't want to fuck every guy mm -hmm. there. Like it's a male projection to think that girls want casual sex like men want casual sex. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do, some certain girls do, but most of them don't. So they look at all these men around them as a nuisance. Yes. Or as, you know, the way you might look at pickpockets, people trying to take something off you, you know, they're predators, mm -hmm. the way, mm -hmm. you know, a rich person might look at all the hangers on that are trying to come in their entourage and fleece them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, girls have their own problems. And I was, because pre-game I wasn't very good with girls, I normally only saw women on the cold end of rejection when they weren't interested in me. It's not until I started dating them that I, you, know, you start to see this. Yeah. So I'd say, I think things balance out. I mean, mm -hmm. if women never got old, if they never got ugly, then they'd be absolutely insufferable forever. But because they, you know, they have this fear of getting old and ugly and they know they gotta lock a mm -hmm. man down at some point before yeah. they lose their purchase power, you know, it gives them humility. Mm -hmm. So I'd say it's about equal. How important is a man's appearance I mean, you're a trim fellow. Thank you. You're, you're clean cut. Not everyone is trim. Uh, let's think about maybe the guy that's carrying 20 to 50 extra pounds. He doesn't feel good about himself. Can he be taught this? Yeah, but he's got to lose that weight. It's, um, I mean, pickup is SMV adjusted. Right? Okay. The better you, the better you look, the better position you start from. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. And uh, I mean, it's not purely looks, right? Like if you had a very supportive, traditional, good upbringing, so you don't have a lot of mental kinks to work through, you also yeah. start from position, you know, some good looking guys had horrible childhoods, mm -hmm. so they got different problems. Yeah. And that can be arguably harder to unpick. Mm -hmm. So it all starts from SMV. And I say game is value added. It's not a magic bullet. So if I, get a student who's 50 pounds overweight and, and even worse, let's say he dresses like shit and doesn't have a proper haircut. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say to this guy, okay, let's just go do our sets. I'm gonna say, look, like, there's nothing you can do this week on your weight, mm -hmm. but you know, you gotta learn how to diet, you gotta get into that gym, you gotta get your haircut, get some proper clothes, you know, present yourself. Show the women who just look at you that you treat yourself with respect, that you have a very high estimation of yourself and you know, you don't mind forgoing the extra slices of pizza. You don't mind you know, cutting back the booze. You get yourself in the gym. You train until you're making noises like a women's tennis match. You know, yeah. it's like game is really, really hard. Cold approach is really, really hard and there's a ton of rejection. So I would say that it's real folly to just make it even harder yeah. by letting the rest of your life go a bit easy. Is there an ideal place to practice game? Yes, Central and Eastern Europe. <laughs> is, uh, I mean, it's, it's all about the market, yes. right? Is, um, I mean, it's a sexual marketplace and some markets are better than others. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's plenty of reason, I'm from the UK, I'm English. There's plenty of reasons to stay in the UK for life, Yeah. right? But if you just want to chase skirt, it's a terrible place. Yeah. Because the quality is appalling. Yeah. English women are appalling. Yeah. I mean, speaking generally. Yeah. So my advice is normally, um, you know, with men, move east. With women, I tell them move west. Yeah. Right? Because the dynamics of the market are just different. Yeah. And for day games specifically, not all forms of game, just day game, 
Day game relies on cities of say a million people or more, mm-hmm. which have a centralized hub, you know, a main shopping street, a main mall, yes. main park area, a lot of pedestrians, because they're, you know, what you need is footfall coming past you and from which you can create your opportunities. Mm-hmm. And so for example, you know, the West Coast of America doesn't really have that because it built up around the motor car. Mm-hmm. So LA is not a good place for day game. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are places around the beach and stuff, you can mm-hmm. do it, but it's not as good as say New York. Mm-hmm. And New York is not as good as Warsaw, yeah. or as good as Moscow, or as good as Prague, or as good as mm-hmm. uh, Riga, for example. Yeah. And then also, Central and Eastern Europe just has this sweet spot where the culture and the economy and the genetics are such that there's a, a lot of pretty women, yeah. pretty feminine women, and that yeah. the culture is accepting of them receiving male advances from cold approach in a way that, say, Morocco isn't. Yeah. So yeah, that, I mean, I mean, Morocco would be a horrible place to day game, right? Yeah. I mean, all the bodies covered up, so you don't know which girl's hot. Yeah. If you open them, they can't speak your language, and if you do talk to them, their brothers come along and stab you. I mean, yeah. it's it's a horrible place for day game, yeah. compared to being in a mall in central London with loads and loads of hot tourists going past, all pairs, babysitters, university students, yeah. all from a Western culture. It's quite anonymous. They can talk to you. Nobody knows you're talking to them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a completely different world. So if a man's in a market where, you know, when he walks around, he doesn't see a lot of hot girls around, mm-hmm. either do something different to day game. You know, don't do day game. Do some other way to get girls or move. Mm-hmm. How can people find out more about you and what you do? Uh, my website, crowdsapua.com. Um, that's my main source. Uh, I got a whole bunch of books out which are on Amazon. Just mm-hmm. search Nick Krauser. Yeah. Um, if they're interested in day game, I'd suggest they start with the book Day Game Mastery. It's the textbook of day game. Okay. That's on Amazon. Or if they want the video of me in field showing how to do it, like with actual live interactions with girls and then analyzing it, there's a product called Day Game Overkill, which does that. Those are probably the two best starting points. Okay. What are your thoughts about the convention? so far I've enjoyed it um, I've had a bit of a over the past I've had a little bit of a love-hate relationship with it I've, I've gone to a few online arguments with a couple of people yeah but now that I'm here I've enjoyed it and yeah. uh, particularly I like the talks today yeah I was uh, I thought very highly of Richard Grannon's talk yeah I've, I've followed him for a couple of years on YouTube yeah. and uh, Ed Latimer's talk I like that I wasn't expecting it I don't know much about him but yes. I really enjoyed it so yeah yeah I'm having a good time Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, George. Thank you. What was your experience so far with the 21 convention? Oh, outstanding. Outstanding. Professional, all across the board. Really good energy with a lot of people. And uh, I just like it because it's a very positive, uh, positive direction. This, uh, George, this, is a, this has been a first class event. It's fantastic, you guys are in a really tight ship. I've been to a lot of conventions over the course of my business career and I can tell when things are well run and when things aren't and this is a very well run operation. I was very impressed. It's pretty incredible to see where Anthony's brought it, especially from last year, which is my first year here and to see the, the upgrades he's made, it's been incredible. I've got my notebook and with every speaker, I've written down about two or three lines mm-hmm. under each of the speakers of just, just the key prime stuff that I got. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's, it's very surreal, man. I'm yeah. really enjoying it. I'm happy to live in such an era where such a thing like this is possible. I have never seen a group of guys like this, a group of 200 men who are focused, squared away, they're working on their values. Just never met a bigger group of wonderful guys. It's kind of neat because I've been to a fair amount of conventions in my day, but you never see one where the guys like uh, here, you can just see Ed Lattimore talking to Tanner about boxing. Yeah. You just sit down and then you tell your boxing experiences. Everybody's kind of pinging off each other. It's yeah. nice. It has been fantastic. And it's been four days of guys all on the same page, working in the same direction. Fascinating meeting some of the people, hearing their stories. You got, you got people traveling from other parts of the world to come here just to see yeah. some of the speakers. That's yeah. amazing. The thing that's impressed me is everybody here is very serious. Yeah. They're taking it you know, close to their heart. What a great convention. Thanks, George.